So with synthetic biology, uh, we use that term to where we turn microorganisms into factories. So I'll give you a stark example that in the 1980s, a chemical company in Japan called Shoadenko KK took bacteria and the bacteria produced L-tryptophan, which they sold on the American market. But after the bacteria produced stuff, they'd have to add other things into the mixture. So they said, let's just genetically engineer the bacteria by adding a different gene that produces something that we wanted to add to the vat anyway. And then let's, a year later, let's do another gene, and let's do another gene. And they weren't aware that the number one result of genetic engineering is surprise side effects, and it ended up having contaminants, very small amounts, 0.1%, 0.01%, five or six contaminants. The L-tryptophan passed the US pharmacological standard of purity, but it also killed about 100 Americans and caused five to 10,000 to become sick or permanently disabled. And this was a cautionary tale which could have stopped genetic engineering in its tracks had the FDA told the world about it. But when they reported to Congress and their actions, they said, oh, it's all L-tryptophan. Never mind that it was only one company that created the problem, and that was the one company that was genetic engineering. They said, oh, it's all L-tryptophan, and they took tryptophan off the market and never told Congress about the genetic engineering roots. Another gene edited or synthetic biology experiment in the 90s, they took yeast and put some genes from yeast into the yeast to increase the outcome of one thing, but they found that there was a 40 to 200 times multiple of a toxin that could produce cancer. And they warned, we should be careful of genetically engineering yeast as a substrate to produce other products because of the side effects. So there you have two examples, early examples, warnings, one involving death and one which was a near miss about synthetic biology using these microorganisms to produce new substances. 